Our next guest is the man credited with helping to put an end to the Rwandan genocide against the Tutsis, ushering his people beyond the tragedy of the past to the promise of the future. He has transformed his nation, growing its economy, redeveloping its infrastructure, and reuniting his people. I had the great privilege to meet with President Paul Kagame when I traveled to Africa in 2014. I have to tell you, I was immediately struck by his strong connection to Israel's story. He has visited Israel on several occasions and hosted Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu last summer during the Prime Minister's historic trip to Africa. President Kagame, President Kagame is the first African head of state in history to address this gathering. The President will be joined in conversation today by former CNN correspondent Frank Sesno. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the President of Rwanda, Paul Kagame. APAC leaders and supporters, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, good morning and thank you very much. It's an honor to be here with you. My message today is simple. Rwanda is without question a friend of Israel. I wanted to take a moment to tell you why. No tragedy is so great, so vast, that human ingenuity and resilience cannot give rise to a better future. The survival and renewal of our two nations testifies to this truth. The security of peoples who have once been targeted for extermination can never be exclusively physical until all ideologies which justify killing as a patriotic duty are defeated, our world is not truly safe. Not for us, not for anyone. <laughs> Together with friends like the United States, we must call for renewal or renewed global solidarity against the relentless efforts to deny genocide and to trivialize the victims. Israel has the right to exist and thrive. As a full member of the international community, this is not an infringement on the rights of any other people and should not be seen as such. It makes our world more secure and peaceful for Rwanda and many other countries in Africa. Engaging productively with Israel has opened new horizons. We look forward to, look, to doing even more together, and I wish 
to take this moment once again to thank you. Please welcome former CNN anchor Frank Sesno. Well, Mr. President, welcome, and it's a great honor and privilege to be here with you and to have you as the first African president address this group. Thank you. Uh, Rwanda's story is so interesting, fascinating, tragic, and inspiring. And thank you for sharing uh, some more about the story and some of these shared experiences and, and convictions that motivate the friendship and the relationship between Rwanda and Israel. I'd like to talk to you about that and for a few minutes. You visited Israel in 2008. Uh, you celebrated the country's 60th anniversary while you were there. In comments to the late President Shimon Peres, you spoke about Israel's, and I'm quoting you here, resilience and tenacity in nation building. What are your observations about Israel's examples of statehood and nation building? And how does that inform and inspire your country's rebirth? Yeah. To begin with, Israel is a nation that has beat all odds every step of the way. And that is, to put it in a context, looking at the hostile environment, sometimes the unsympathetic uh, international community, Israel continues to be secure, to thrive, and it has invested in its people. It has developed a knowledge-based economy. So when you look at all this uh, put it together, it mirrors what we are going through, have been going through in the recent past. So we think there are lessons to be learned here and that if people are determined, focused, and it's about their survival, I think there are not going to be any limits as to how they can go to defend and to develop themselves. And so what pages from Israel's experience then do you take as you try to rebuild your country? It's this single-mindedness in terms of working very hard Single-mindedness. Single-mindedness about survival, about what needs to be done that the people invest in, starting with the people, and the quality of that investment in terms of building capacities that will develop in a society as well as ensure that they have the capacity to protect themselves. In the last few years, there, there have been a number of developments um, that are it's quite interesting um, in Israel's relationship with Africa. Uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu visited Rwanda as part of his Four Nation African tour last year. Uh, the first African-Israel summit uh, will take place in Africa later this year. In 2014, Rwanda helped block a move in the United Nations at the UN Security Council um, that would have granted statehood status for the Palestinians, <laughs> bypassing direct negotiations with Israel uh, when you abstained on that vote. So what have been some of the outcomes of these experiences and these encounters? And is there a chance that there will be greater um, understanding in Africa, continent-wide, for Israel's positions going forward? We are happy that Israel is engaging with Africa, has come back to Africa, and Africa is responding in a good way. Previously, there has been absence of that engagement, and it has, in a way, hurt the understanding people should have about Israel and what has gone through and what can be done for many problems to be addressed relating to the situation 
with Israel. But this engagement has been helpful. Uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu visited the, the East African region. We had six leaders uh, meeting and uh, hosting uh, the Prime Minister and talking about issues relating to our relationship and uh, many things that can be done, including the support of uh, many efforts uh, Israel is undertaking. So th this is a very good thing. Then there came the, also the vote. There had been a vote uh, at the UN. And for us, the reason for abstaining was we thought there was, first of all, the way it was being done, the timing. We thought this was going to be prejudicial to other things that had to be addressed in terms of... Prejudicial. Absolutely. In what sense? Meaning, you see, you have other people sitting and determining what should happen without allowing the parties concerned to sit and talk and agree what the way forward should be. And our experience in Rwanda, <laughs> our experience in Rwanda is that you cannot simply introduce solutions to people from outside and they work without involving the people that are concerned. <laughs> so this is where we came from. This was the main reason. The way it was being done, the timing, when there should have been other discussions engaging the parties concerned to agree. Uh, then you have many other people coming in and deciding. We thought that was the wrong way to do it. And abstaining also meant many other things. It, means, it meant we didn't agree with what was going on. But at the same time, our position has also, also been, it doesn't mean when you are a friend of Israel that you are an enemy of someone else. I think it's a question of using... But that you cannot impose an agreement like this. You cannot impose a settlement like this. It's the wrong thing to do. Tell us about the Africa summit and what you hope will come of the summit and what Israel and Africa will get out of that. Many things. I, I think there are complementary capabilities and mutual interests here. And once people come together, say, for example, from Israel, looking at how Israel has built itself uh, in terms of uh, uh, knowledge, as I said, best economy, building on uh, uh, technological uh, innovations. There are experiences and benefits to share here uh, on the side uh, of Israel, as well as African countries playing their part in many ways. Uh, if we had uh, uh, scientists working together, investors uh, investing in the key areas of uh, Africa's development. I think there is a lot that can happen between Israel and Africa, especially built on these different capabilities and the very mutual interests that uh, are present. Africa is a fast-growing continent now, so there are great opportunities. We heard a few moments ago former Prime Minister Tony Blair talk about the vibrancy and the innovation uh, that Israel represents. In thinking about energy, agriculture, technology, some of the places where you're working closely with Israel now, as you look in ways to see a more integrated relationship over the next five, ten years, where do you see that going? I see it growing. I see it... Uh in agriculture, in energy, in uh, information and communication technologies, in, in different paths. Uh, and I see these technologies driving our future economies. Uh, and already African economies have been growing. In fact, they've been growing in the absence of these key factors, whether it is energy or technology or other things, which. Israel has in abundance. So I think when we work together, when we 
support each other, uh, this can benefit uh, the growth of our economies across the continent. As president of Rwanda and a friend of Israel and a visitor to the United States, let's connect the dots there. What role should the United States be playing in your view now in the relationship with Israel and Africa and the world and also in the region? Well, there is a lot that needs to happen in the relationship first between the United States and Africa where we need to value each other as partners and that partnership can grow. Uh, and then already the partnership between Israel and the United States is very strong. So the United States can use its enormous power, it holds in many ways, to bring the parties concerned uh, in this uh, engagement with Israel to actually come to terms with the reality that there are so complex problems to be addressed, but at the same time, when people work together and talk to each other and in actual fact are determined to find a solution that benefits all of them, I think that can lead to a solution. And the United States probably, as I know, is such an honorary power that can give uh, this kind of momentum to the engagement of the parties to reach an agreement. But of course, the uh, United States will have to choose how it uses this power indeed to influence the parties uh, to work together to reach an agreement that is going to work for all of them. And I think the United States has uh, all it needs to, to, to be able to do that. We will be listening very closely to that. Mr. President, you and your country are a great inspiration. Thank you so much for being here and thank you for sharing your perspectives on your growing relationship thank with you. Israel and the thank world. You. Thank you so much. Thank you.